Hey, it's Samir Borman. This is the Daily 10 segment of the Town Tango Podcast, and I am here with Arash. What's up? And we're going to rap about compensation and should, like, for an external agency, should it be disclosed? Even internally, like, should compensation be a part of the hiring manager's purview? Or should they just simply be looking at the candidate on their own merit and then they can go ahead and determine at what compensation level they come in at? Yeah, you know, it's it's an interesting topic. Um, I spoke to a candidate just maybe 30 minutes ago and, you know, what kind of target salary are you potentially looking at and really didn't have something in mind. So, you know, we've had instances where that's definitely comes up and, and it's like, let's negotiate when we get to that point in time. And I can understand that. I can understand wanting to know what the budget is from a candidate perspective. Obviously, they don't want to waste their time. Mm-hmm. The client doesn't want to waste their time. The internal, external recruiters don't want to waste their time. So obviously, we all want to be in the same ballpark. Um, I think where somebody... But when you get market, so everyone's, everyone says, clients say, what's market? Right. Candidates want market. So what happens here is... Who's dictating market? No. What happens here is that clients do, want, do not want to overpay. They of course want not. To pay, they want to pay the least they can. And candidates don't want to leave any money on the table. So, but in reality... There's a conflict of interest a little bit. Eh, quite possibly. And uh, I think this in a lot of roles where it's a skills-based and it's, and it's merit-based based on skill, it really should come down to if you have six months experience, but your skill level is equivalent to somebody who makes at the highest range in the industry, why not? Agreed. But, but if you were to submit, let's, you know, we, we see the case where it's like somebody's really junior, but their skill is far above that level. Sure. Clients have a hesitancy to, to value that. Sometimes they do, you know, come above and beyond because they realize that and they, they come. But I think a lot of times because they're hesitant is because they don't have a good way of providing those bands and how to objectively go, this person's in this band compared to the previous person, and that becomes a challenge. But to your point, taking away all the salary and comp up front, and not that should not, again, we were, we were talking about bias, remove that bias. It's right? one aspect that could be it's, removed. It's one, I mean, we're, we're talking about one particular narrow view of, of compensation, but I think there is a bias because there's a bias in everything we do when it comes to money. If you see two products and one's more expensive, inherently you think the more expensive one is probably better without Agreed. information, without additional information, without knowledge to know if it's truly better. Like two cars, here's a hundred thousand dollar car, here's a twenty thousand dollar car. You're gonna say the hundred thousand dollar car is better, but if you maybe are you know super duper mechanic or you really know cars and you know the twenty thousand dollar car is undervalued, then you might be in a position to go, ah, it's a good deal. I'm gonna take that. Yeah, and I think it depends what what needs you have as an individual or a team, whatever the case is. I think when you're you're looking at compensation, I think the, the, the dollar amount can impact how you interview too. Right. And, and there's definitely, it creates, it creates a barrier sometimes that a candidate unfortunately is up against the wall. Right. So I think it's trying to be able to just look at purely skills of what I'm looking for based on skills of what you have. Right. And making sure that the first line of defense isn't just, oh, this person isn't qualified because they're looking for too much. Well, you haven't even spoken to them. They well, could be worth more than they're even looking to get and also could be worth way more to your team, but you're already discrediting them just because they're 10K above salary range or whatever the case is. Well, then, you know, for, for in engineering roles, based on compensation, they expect a certain level of technical ability. Sure. So if you send somebody in, and this is the tricky part, is you're working with the candidate you know the hiring manager, you're like, if I submit you towards the top, they're going to have a much more rigorous process. Are you able to pass that? And that's very, very subjective. All these are just subjective terms we threw out. And the candidate's like, well, well, I'm being paid X. I think I should get paid Y. And then they go in and the hiring manager, you know, and the process is, you know, a level that's extraordinarily difficult. They don't pass and you get the feedback. Well, if they came in a little bit lower salary and it's like, well, you know, they're trying to again maximize, you know, their hiring needs based on making sure they don't overpay for a specific skill set. Right. And that's where it gets tricky because that is subjective in terms of being able to know. But but that's again, that's one particular company's, you know, bar at that given time based on their dynamics. 
But if you were to remove that and they, they had a more objective first screening and go, okay, well, this person passed at this level, let's figure out how good they really are. Then they could go back and go, all right, based on this person, we're only going to offer you 165. Now, the problem with the candidate is maybe they were looking for 200 and they would have never gone through the interview process. So nobody wants to invest time without knowing that there might be a payoff at the end for them either. Yeah, and I think a lot of times too, it's it's keeping your cards close to your chest in, indefinitely when it comes to negotiations, right? I think people are thinking if we get to the end of the road, is it going to hurt me that they already know kind of what I'm seeking? Am I selling myself short by putting a number out there in what I'm looking for, because maybe they'll offer me more money. So it could be the opposite as a candidate is kind of the reasoning for not maybe exploring or, or you know, putting a compensation with what they're looking for. So I get that too. So I, I think it's a, it's a very interesting, you know, cat and mouse game that there's maybe no exact best way to play it out. Um, but well, yeah, I think I, that you I think it's to, definitely interesting. Yeah. I mean, when, when you're dealing with internal recruiters and I like leave the salary off for the manager, because they're not concerned with that. They're only concerned with growing their team. I think I, I personally like that more because I think they're going to look at the candidate based on as, as much merit as they can. And then obviously if, if, if they don't care about compensation, it's not part of their you know purview to set those standards and, and the recruiting team's handling that the recruiting team can at least go, can they afford that? Is it even in the scope of budget? The hiring manager is a little disconnected. It's a little bit more black box to them. They can just check check for what they need to. But again, every organization is different. But but I do think when that compensation comes in and bars go up, and all of a sudden there's different standards based on different compensations, and and you and you're trying to talk down the candidate. It's like, well, what's the top of their range? Well, the top of their range is, you know, immaterial. It's what are you looking for? Well, I think if you you want to facilitate more conversation, yeah. right? So I think there's times where the gap might not be enormous, but when you foster dialogue, communication, things become more flexible when people like the opportunity, when, you know, on both ends, right? You maybe they come up a little, maybe you go down a little. So I think it's also not just discrediting people because they're too expensive. You haven't even talked to this individual sent over and you're already saying, would they be open to less money? Like, I well, it's because it's, there's, it's bias because we're trained when you think you found a good candidate as a, let's say you're in any recruiter, you're going to use that as a guide as, as the next candidate's better, whatever. And you're going to carry your bias into the next. So the person's going to look at the revenue and go, well, I don't, the resume and go, well, I don't think this person's a, you know, X, X salary type of person. Right. I think they'd be a little bit better at a lesser salary. Or do you think they're open to it? And I think the number one thing I've heard from a lot of candidates is, especially on the, on the technical side is, can I delay that conversation? And it's like, well, I just want to make sure that you're not looking for the moon, right? which becomes a difficult game for them because they really do want to understand the work they're doing, what the challenge is, and then the compensation. And I get why no one wants to waste their time to go through a process for either side. But I do think that that bias that gets introduced off that initial screen, especially when you haven't spoken, again, going back to the car analogy, with more information, you can discern between value of two different or three different right. comparisons. I agree with that. But when you get a resume and all you've seen is just a resume, I think we talked about context and all you know is here's the summary, here's a little bit of brief history, here's the compensation and a flat resume. And you've never had a conversation. It becomes really difficult. And that's where you got to obviously trust your partner. They're doing a good job and they're vetting good candidates. But for the most part across the industry, I, I'd imagine most are using that salary requirement with the candidate desires as a huge weed out. Yeah, no. Well, yeah, it's, it's without a doubt an easy way to kind of say, okay, this person's good or bad, you know, based on how much money they're looking for. Obviously you can't ask how much money they are currently making, but that's a good, easy indicator to set the tone for the rest of the interview cycle. Yeah. So, I mean, what is the thought out there? If you left off the, if you're a hiring manager and you were not able to see the compensation, how would you view that? Would that be a benefit to you? Or do you need to know the comp to help gauge how a potential candidate might be at what level they're at. Uh, give us some feedback, leave us a review on this podcast, and then we'll be back. Thanks. Thanks.